What's up, everybody? Tim Anderson here, a.k.a. Renfill. I am joined by Sam, who is casually grooming himself on the bed behind me because Chris let him in here to the air conditioning. <laughs> Welcome back to another Fantasy Grounds tutorial. Today we're going to be going through modules and why I think it's extremely worthwhile to use modules when you're playing in Fantasy Grounds. The question that comes up from a lot of people is, why do I need to pay twice? If I already own the books... If I already own the PDFs, if I already own the physical books, why would I pay again? Well, you're not actually paying for the books. You're paying for the conversion. You're paying for the time someone has taken to take all of the information that's in one of those books and to put it into a module that plugs into Fantasy Grounds and allows you to quickly drag and drop maps, encounters, abilities, quests, quest rewards, everything you would need to run the campaign and not have to manually set everything up in advance, which is a huge time saver for someone who's running the campaign and actually taking the time to put all of this together and make something that's enjoyable for the players. Yes, it means you need to spend an extra $20, $25, whatever it is, depending on the, you know, the exchange rates and inflation and discounts and all those other things. Um, but it is something where I think it's worth the time and money if you're going to be using a virtual tabletop program where you don't have the time to put into doing all the conversions for yourself. If you have the time to do so, absolutely do it. And if that's something you enjoy, great. I'm not. I don't enjoy that. I, my time is limited. I need to be able to get in and be able to do something as quickly as possible. So I don't have a problem doing the actual modules because it, it's something that I think is worth the money. In any case, we're going to be getting into those modules today and how those work. So the first thing you're going to do with a 5th edition module, a D&D module, is we're going to be diving into um, today's D&D Lost Mine of Andelver, which as I understand things was the very first module that was ever created for Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition. Um, once you've got it up here um, and loaded into your fantasy grounds, you just need to bring it up like so and there's all the information that you would ever need to go through in terms of reading through all these little bits of pieces. You just click on the shield icons and it's going to give you all the things you need. But in our case, the most important thing is going straight to the story, which is going to be this section right here, which breaks down the PDF or the book, depending on which version you own. It breaks this down into all the various segments, starting with you know, the conversion notes and then the introduction. And you could flip through these things as if they were pages like so and go through here, get all the information you would need to know about the adventuring hook, setting everything up, running the adventure, the background, the overview, the forgotten realms, all this other stuff. But the most important thing is when you want to actually run the adventure, you get here to part one. And this starts off with part one, goblin arrows. And you get a bunch of information presented to you in this area right here. And the coolest thing about this is as you're reading through, when you want to present something to the players and they have these DM notes here, which is stuff for you to narrate, you can just click this chat button and it puts it over there into the chat window, which is what all of the players see. So then they can read it as you're reading through it. So it's a great way to present it to the players. And so you would read that and you would go through the combat encounter and, and everything you would need to do, get to the next part. There's another section of text. Next part, there's another section of text. So on and so forth. All this stuff is already programmed in so that you just click and everything is presentable so that you can just um, click things like, what do the goblins know if they actually capture a goblin and they're going to be going through and, and questioning the goblin, you would go down in here and see what do the goblins know. If the characters captured or charm any of the goblins here, the goblins could be persuaded to divulge some useful information. And they would talk about, oh, there's 15 goblins living in the lair. The leader is a bugbear named Clark, so on and so forth. And the dwarf and his map were delivered to King Grawl as instructed. The human's companion is being held in the eating cave, which is area six. And you can keep going from there so once you get into the next section it would be like the cave mouth and you would put this into the chat window following the goblins trail you come across a large cave and hillside five miles from the scene of the ambush um now we get into um this section the goblin blind um and the encounters and everything else so this is where we're getting into the cragmaws so if we were to come over to here and get into the cragmaw hideout um, which is the section up above where we said what the goblins know, you would have noticed that there was two maps here. One, which is the DM's map, and the other one, which is the player's map, right? So one of the things we would do is 
close some of this stuff down here. Um, and we would go ahead and let's put that down into a Mac down here. Um, we would expand this map so we can see this map. Go ahead and close the story stuff down. Um, we get to the cave mouth. Okay, we've got the map set up and everything else. It says, on the eastern side of the stream, flowing from the cave mouth, a small area in the briar thickets has been hollowed out to form a lookout post or blind. Wooden planks flatten out the briars and provide room for guards to lie hidden and watch the area, including a pair of goblins lurking there right now. Um, this is when they can see everything um, if they've made their uh, rolls. Um, now, the encounter here um, is that um, whether or not the goblins see the players or not. But let's assume that they don't see the players, and you want to quickly and easily get the encounter up and going. This is one of the reasons I love Fantasy Grounds modules. So you see how it says encounters over here? It says goblins. So there's going to be two things that happen when I, when I open this up. Um, well, not quite yet. Um, two things are going to happen when I do this. So let me get the combat tracker up. Um, I've opened up the goblin blind encounter from this section right here, right? And it talks about the two goblins are stationed there that the players could see, but we don't actually see them on the map yet. So we assume the players would be coming in from, say, down here. So I would drag the characters down onto the map like so, right? And these are some characters that we previously played through with. So we're going to drag these characters down onto the map. So we're assuming that's where the characters are coming from. Now to add this encounter to the combat tracker and to automatically add them to the map at the same time, we would click add encounter to combat tracker and it's gonna do two things at the same time. One, it's gonna add the, the NPCs to the combat tracker and it's gonna add them to the map in the location where they are supposed to be located. So watch what happens when I click the button. Boom. It added them up here with their initiative rolls already rolled, and down here on the map, right there, it added the two goblins. Now, currently, they're invisible, so we would click those to be visible, like so. We would make our rolls to see if they were surprised or not, and then we would get into combat. And if you've never done combat in Fantasy Grounds, this is one of the things I love that makes Fantasy Grounds so easy in terms of having all of this stuff already be set up. So let's go ahead and bring up our characters and very quickly have them roll initiative um, because uh, they haven't yet. Um, so we're going to go through here and say um, he's going to roll his initiative. He's going to roll his initiative. He's going to roll his initiative. She's going to roll hers. Oops. That was hers. His and his. And then we've got all that mess out of the way because I'm not supposed to be running all these characters. Uh, everybody's got their initiative has been rolled. We get all these character sheets out of the way. And now we got all the initiative done, so we're ready to do combat. So right off the bat, uh, we've got Chrisma would be taking charge. So she's going to say, I want to, you know, I want to attack Goblin 1, right? So if she, if I was running her character, I would have her character sheet open. I would go to the abilities page, uh, excuse me, the actions page, not the abilities page, and I would say I want to shoot a, I want to shoot my short bow, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and double click, and it says I missed down here in the bottom left. You'll notice that, so I missed. So we go to the next player, and this character is in this case skinny. Um, so we would go to Skinny, we would open him up, we would then go to his actions, we'd say he also has a short bow, so we would, which does six points of damage to the goblin, like so. Now we get into the goblin's turn. So we'd go down here and goblin one, let's say, let's bring this back down. Goblin one would attack, say this guy right here. So we'd have him use his short bow. He rolls to attack. That's a hit. He rolls for damage. Boom. Next one. Okay, let's have him attack this guy right here. We have him roll to attack. That's a miss. So on and so forth, and you go through the combat encounter. 
Um, that's the easiest way that to explain this. Now, let's say the characters have gotten a little bit deeper in to the caves, right? And we want to go back into the module. We'll go into the Lost Mind of Fidel. We'll get back into the story. Close all this down. Uh, story here. Bring this up over here. And we're going to go back into the Kragma hideout because there's some other stuff we want to see here. Uh, where are the wolf encounters? The wolf encounters are here. So once I've gotten to the wolf encounter, we would say, okay, what does this look like? So there's three wolves, right? So again, combat tracker would be up here. By this point, we would have taken care of the um, um, we would have taken care of the uh, these goblins, so they're off the tracker. We want to add the wolf encounter. So boom, we're going to click that. It adds the three wolves to the combat tracker, and it also adds them right up here on the map where they would be located. And this would assume that the players have moved in. So let's pick a player. In this case, let's bring this guy. And you notice the line of sight you know, as this character is moving around into the map. You know, and he's also getting arrows back to the other party members because he has those party members selected. So we would unselect those party members that shows distance and everything else. But we can come in here and we can get the line of sight for um, these wolves. So he would sneak in, see the wolves, do something with the wolves, you know, do whatever needs to be done with the wolves, so on and so forth. But we don't just have the wolves. Because then we get into, there's an encounter in here. There's the goblin on the bridge. There's this encounter. I want to get to the crag encounter. The Clark encounter. So here's when we would say, click on the Clark encounter. And this is a pretty big encounter. And this is in Clark's cave. And you would click this. And it would add all of these to the map. Um, like so. And now you have this whole encounter set up um, with Clark. And his minions. All right? And so this is one of the reasons I love having this already set up because I don't have to do any manual anything in terms of I don't have to set up the NPCs. Like if I get Clark and I and I take Clark and he's on the map and I click on Clark, his information is already filled out, including all of the abilities that Clark's gonna do in combat. So I can, he, he has the, the Brute trait. Melee weapon does one extra die of its damage when the bugger hits with it, including the attack. He also gets Surprise Attack. If he surprises attack, blah, 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 blah. Then he gets uh, the attack with his Morning Star or his Javelin. So all this is already in here. Then if he has abilities and, and spells and so on and so forth, those would also be included on this. So all of the actions are already set up so that as I'm running them in combat, I haven't had to add anything to any of this. It's already in here. All the abilities are plugged in. It's really easy to then go from here and, and just do the combat encounter with my characters in the space and go from there. So that's one of the reasons I really like this is because the combat stuff is really easy. The combat encounters are already set up to where it puts everything on the map for you in the place that it's supposed to be without you having to do any manual placement. All the abilities are already set up with all of your monsters and creatures and everything else plus everything that's from the pdf for the most part is in here now there are hiccups i have noticed and i will i will for the purpose of complete disclosure there are hiccups in some places here and there and that's just due to human error it, it happens sometimes as an example um I know that like one of the very first encounters in the game where you get into the, the goblin ambush, which happens in this pass, like uh, in the woods, when you find like the horses, a horse's body and wagon stuff, there's not a map for that. So you just have to use one of the fantasy ground maps or make your own map or import your, you can actually find the PDF map online and just import it into fantasy grounds and use it. Otherwise, if you come in here to the, um, images section and go to the drop down for uh, images you can go down to maps lost mine of Fandelver, and you'll notice that all of these maps are listed so we'll close this one down for a minute and we'll show things like here's the map for Fandolin. if you're the dm this is your map this is the map that you would be looking at with all of the pois and everything else and then here's the one for the players 
which doesn't necessarily have all the information spelled out. You can actually get rid of the shortcuts so they don't even see any POIs, and then they would just get this right here. And then as they discover POIs, you can put POIs back on the map for players to go, oh, this is, you know, that's this location, um, that's this location, so on and so forth. Um, but that's up to you how you want to do this. Um, but that's an example. You get the Fandolin map, there's the red brand hideout map, and you always get a DM version, which has all of the red uh, POIs laid out for you. And then you get the player version, which um, in this case, um, I've got those. You can turn those off. And you would have this one get expanded for the players so that they can see what's going on. Get rid of the POIs there and disable that. And have this be like so. And then bring your players in here. And you'll notice there's things like this. That's because these are doors and traps that are opened and shut. And your players have line of sight depending on um where they're at on the map so if i pulled somebody down in here um you would see that the map's changed now because this character only has line of sight and that door is open but if i were to close that door they no longer have line of sight past that map so this is another huge feature because if you were to do and you can you could totally do this all yourself you can set up maps in Fantasy Grounds, you can take the time to come in here and add line of sight and add the walls and add the doors and add the traps and everything else so that you can do this with your own maps. But when you're dealing with an official module, this is one of the reasons I don't have a problem spending the money on official modules. This is the difference. Um, I've been very much only VTT for like a decade now because of full-time travel and being a digital nomad and living around the world. So I haven't needed to worry about physical tabletop for a long time and I love physical tabletop there's nothing better than having books in front of you books in your hand sitting at a table with your friends but the reality of my world is that I traveled for a long time for a living and so I needed to be able to do things virtually and so virtual tabletop has always been something that I've appreciated because it allows me to still do tabletop with my friends and then getting into streaming and content creation over the years um, I'm a big fan of doing everything online and I don't necessarily, on a personal level, I don't necessarily go purchase a physical version and a digital version. Most of the time, I'm purchasing only digital versions these days. And to be honest with you, I will most often just purchase them straight up for Fantasy Grounds. Because as is the case for like Pathfinder, as an example, with Paizo, if I purchase a book on Fantasy Grounds, I get the PDF over at Paizo for free. Like, they allow me to do cross. So if I own it here, I also own it on Paizo's website. And then if I ever want to go out there and get like the um, the physical version, I can. And similarly, if I buy a PDF version over on Paizo, I get that the amount of that purchase credited to my Fantasy Grounds account. So that if I go buy that PDF in the module format on Fantasy Grounds, I then have access to it here so with the with the discount so it's it's a really cool feature i don't know that they necessarily do that with D, &D. maybe they're doing that with D, D beyond these days i don't know they weren't doing it when we bought all the stuff we bought back in the day but that was i bought all this stuff like two years ago um for fantasy grounds when we were first getting going with fifth edition stuff in in this particular program because before this we had used roll 20. Anyway, the map functionality is another huge component of it because I don't have to set any of this up. It's already here. So I can take a player and run this character through and I can have the doors be open or shut based on and the character's only going to see what their character could see based on their race, their infravision. So here, let me let me drop a um, I think if I one of these human characters, I think this is a human character. Let's get rid of this one off the map. I think this character is human. No, this is not a map that has darkness on it. But this character can't ever see because they are human. And so they don't have a light source. And so um, in dark caves and stuff, they have a hard time. Let me see if I can find a cave map and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Um, let me get the images up here. Wave Echo Cave. This is probably a good one. Let's take a look at this. And let's get rid of the POIs. Okay. And then let's take this human. Actually, I want to enable 
because they would start down in here. So let's take this character and put them right down there on the map. Okay? And then let's turn that right back on. And then we'll click on that character. That character can't see squat, right? Now, if I were to add an effect to that character, let's go down to that character in the combat tracker. And let's say I were to give that character a, a torch. Let's watch what happens when I give that character. Or better yet, let's give them a lantern. Now suddenly they can see in a radius around their character, right? But they can only see a certain amount based on open doors and so on and so forth. So this is based on, this is a human character. Now if I were to drop this character on here, this character has infravision. Plus he can see with the light that's already been posted. And also let's say this character who's an elf, I could post this character all the way up in here and this character has infravision. Now you'll notice a difference because this character sees in black and white because they're seen in infravision, whereas the light from Thamius's torch allows them to see colors. So what if I were to take this character up here and apply a light source to that character? I'm scrolling down to get it on there and let's put uh, the spell light. Now you notice there's color all of a sudden. So this character can move in here and the beds have color, all these things have color. This is the functionality that these maps have and one of the reasons why I'm such a big fan of what you can get out of the official modules that you purchase through Fantasy Grounds and how you can use these to your advantage. So not only can you easily get your encounters up and going because all the encounters are already created for you, they pop up on the map where they're supposed to be, they have all their abilities associated with them and tied to them so that you don't have to come up with anything on your own, there's no downtime for you to create anything. You also have all of these maps available which already have the line of sight and all of the traps and all of the doors and everything else already set up and programmed so that all you have to do as the DM is click. The line of sight works on characters because that's the way it's programmed to work because you don't have to set any of that stuff up. So it's a hugely powerful tool in terms of allowing you to run these official modules because everything's already been done for you. But there's also, this is the other cool part, is when we get into quests. When you complete a quest, now whether or not you're running experience points or not is up to you, but here's some of the cool things you can do with say a quest. Like let's say we've done um, where is it at? Meet me in Phandalin. Uh, there's only, I need a different one. Um, Hyla's job offer. I may need to actually go to these quests here. So give me a second here. We're going to go into the story here. And we're going to say, um, encounters in Phandalin. The Stonehill Inn. I gotta find it really quick because I know there is a um, specific section in here. Is it the Town Master's Hall? Finding Cragmore Castle. That's not the right one. Work Trouble. Well, I could show you what this is. I want to find one that has XP and goodies. So give me two seconds here because I need to find out where it is. Uh, the Lion Shield Coster, Return Supplies. Well, here's, here's a good example. So the, the reward for the Return Supplies is 50 gold pieces, right? So I would come over to the party sheet. And on the right-hand side of the party sheet, we have the main, which is all the characters of the party. But then on the inventory tab... We have this section right here which says inventory. So if a quest is going to give me a 50 gold piece reward, I could just click right here and drag this, and it's going to add this gold pieces. In this case, it says 54. I don't know why it said 54. Um, we can add this to the gold piece. There it is, 50 gold pieces, and it adds that. Um, but it says you drop treasure parcel or items here to assign treasure to party members. So let, let's find a different treasure um, Quest, Hyla's job over. This one would give 100 XP. So we would drag the XP over here, right? That's an example of something 
that we could get. Um, Stonehill Inn. Most of these are gold. I'm trying to find one that is more than gold. So give me two seconds. I promise. I promise there's a treasure in here. Okay, here, here's a good example. Here's a parcel that we would find in a section of a dungeon. So if we if we have explored the armory and we were to find this uh, parcel, right, in the armory, um, we could take this whole thing and drop it over here just like we did into the parcel items. And it would drop all of that, the, the items that we found in the parcel right here. Now from here, I can ask the characters who do I want to assign this stuff to well let's say that you know character you know Thamius wants that and Bim wants the crossbow and uh, Skinny wants that and Chrisma wants that and then Chrisma wants this and then um, you know somebody else wants that um, Who's the other party members? I don't even remember anymore. Uh, let's just say Bim takes those. Once I've assigned those and I click this uh, uh, and, and we've assigned those accordingly and we've got the gold and everything we're ready to go, there's this button here that says distribute assignment and coins. And we would click this and it would immediately distribute the 50 gold points, gold pieces between all of the party members and assign those items to the individuals that we asked them to. And if we check this on the left hand side, we're going to see in the chat window distributed items assigned to the party. So all those things are distributed accordingly. Um, now, there's still leftover, which we could continue assigning as we as we wanted to if we needed to like so because we still have these crossbows and spears um but this is another really cool thing because it allows you to take items and give them to um the party now we could also choose to sell items um if we wanted to so on and so forth um then there's other and then there's xp this is the one for xp i was i was putting it somewhere else um Drag completed encounter links here. I was trying to add it on the inventory one because it's been a while since I've done this. So if we had one that was offering XP um, like this, we would drag the XP over here like it told us to. And then um, uh, let's see here. There we go. I had to actually click the shield one to drag it over. But you drag the shield icon over and we're assigning XP to the characters. And we're saying, you know, a, a, award that XP to the players. We click award and boom, it assigns XP points to all the party members in your party. So if you're using experience points, this is a very easy way to just take the experience points from the encounter, plug them in right here, click that button, and it applies the experience points across the whole party without you having to do anything. And as they accumulate enough experience points, they will eventually level up and go through that process as well. So this is just another one of the reasons why I think it's worthwhile to use a module because you can come in here and it's all done for you so that you don't have to do, literally your only job as the game master is gonna be to read from the module, go through the story beats, and as you come across quests, have them do the quests, have them do the encounters, pick the rewards, boom, this one's a gold reward, we would put that in the inventory, this one, you're going to get a parcel. We put that in the inventory. Um, Glass Staff's Quarters, there's going to be an encounter. Um, and then after that, there's going to be a parcel. Lots of parcels, actually. We're going to have that parcel. We're going to have that parcel. We're going to have that parcel. Three different parcels. And we get a quest completion with 400 experience points. So we would just very quickly come in here to the party. Let's bring this uh, down. We would come into the party sheet and say, okay, right away we're getting 400 experience points, right, for doing that. So we're going to award that to our party members like so. And then we're going to come into, the, by the way, when we're done with one, you know, move it out of the way. Um, but then we come back over here into the inventory and we say, oh, okay, we got to add, we get this one, we get this one, and we get this one. Here's all the items 
and all the gold coins and everything else that they would get. Assign it to the players that you want. We'll just give it all to Chrisma because she's easy to please. And and click that button and boom, it's all done. And then if we wanted to, we could go look at um, Christmas character information and we go to her inventory and we would notice that all of those things have been assigned to her so not only do they show up on the left hand side but um, you know they would they would show up in her inventory as well it's really easy there's in my mind no reason not to want to use an official module if you're going to be going through content like officially licensed content for whatever it is your chosen um, setting is. You know, there's lots of different things on Fantasy Grounds. You could play Dungeons and Dragons, you know, first, second, third, fourth, fifth edition. You've got the core rules, you've got Pathfinder, you've got Starfinder, you've got Castles and Crusades. Whatever your chosen rule set is, chances are they've produced some of the official modules within Fantasy Grounds for that setting and that rule set. It's worth it. In this case, um, I've given you a rough overview. I mean, I could probably make an hour-long video about this. Um, I could probably make a better version of this if I were to go through and, and, and you know, do this with a script as opposed to doing it from memory. But I just wanted to sit down and do a 30-minute thing and show you guys some of the things that I really like about running these official campaign modules because you can get in and very quickly assign experience points, assign items, use the maps, the encounters are set up, the line of sights and the maps are all set up, all the story beats are already set up, it's drag and drop, everything's clickable, you can open things up, you can share your maps with your party members, you can do all the things you need to do without any heavy lifting on your end. You do have to pay for it, but again, you're not paying for a second version of the book, you're paying for this conversion. You're paying for all of the stuff that I just showed you so that you don't have to do any heavy lifting all you have to do is load up Fantasy Grounds, load up your module, and start reading off of it, sharing the maps with your players, dropping the encounters on the map, running the encounters through the combat tracker, distributing your loot after the fact, distributing your, your coins and everything else, doing your short rests, your long rests, leveling up your characters, going and doing more quests, and going through the adventure path in the whatever order the players go through it. That's it. That's how simple it is. Anyway, if you guys enjoyed, do me a solid. Like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon, and support the channel, please. I get to do this full-time because of the support of all of these amazing people. So, super chats and stickers on live streams and premieres, super thanks on uploaded videos, programmed amounts are down below. YouTube has a few amounts that you can choose from, or you can pick your own and drop 50 bucks, 5 bucks, 500 bucks, whatever. Memberships on the channel start at $3 a month and go up. There's also the Patreon page where you can get our source book and campaign and modules and map packs and our point-and-click adventure game and our fantasy book series and beyond. The links to our Discord are down below, so hopefully we'll see you there as well. And until next time, everybody, stay safe and happy adventuring out there. Stick around because I'll have more Fantasy Ground stuff to and coming later on down the pipeline. Until next time, everybody. Happy gaming.